Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, obviously this is part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, uh, go and visit that and you'll see um, how we've got to this stage uh, and what we had to do in order to get the uh, the old alternator out of the car. Now, as, as, as you can guess, this is the old one um, and its replacement is right here in this box. And this is a Replacement Bosch alternator. This has been remanufactured by Bosch, hence the reason why it comes in a uh, in a Bosch box still. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a direct swap. So what we need to do is obviously I need to reuse the three bolts um, from the original one, and then we can get this fitted. So without further ado, let's not stand on ceremony. Let's get stuck into it. <laughs> Right, before we, uh, before we get the new alternator stuck on the car, um, what I've also got um, to tell you about is I bought four new inlet manifold gaskets. Uh, if you saw the last episode, you'll see that the ones on the inlet manifold are pretty, pretty mangled. So I heard on the side of course and got four new ones of them. Brand new throttle body gasket, as recommended by the manual. The manual does say if you remove the throttle body to replace the throttle body, uh, throttle body gasket. So I've got one of them as well, they're not expensive. Um, I'll, I'll link everything in the description down below so you can go and check it out. And I also picked up two um, stainless steel Jubilee clips. I think these are, uh, what are they, 59, yeah, 59 to 82 millimeters. Um, so they're perfectly adequate for um, the inlet pipe on this car so yeah um, obviously you can get the um, factory crimped um, clamps uh, if you so wish if you've got the tool I do actually have one of the tools but Jubilee clips are so much easier and um, it saves throwing something away if you ever have to take it off again anyway right let's get on with this alternator okay what we need to do is take the bolts off of the old alternator uh, and fit them into the new one because they need to go into the alternator before um, it goes down onto the block because there isn't enough room to fit the bolts in uh, afterwards if you recall from the last episode just like so right what we need to do now is just maneuver it into the correct position so here's the main cable for the alternator what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck that up above the coolant pipe so it's out of the way and all we're going to do is fit the bolts, uh, put the alternator on and fit the bolts. The bolts go into these three locations here, one there, one there, and one there. Uh, there's two at the bottom, but it goes into the left hand of the two. So, what we need to do, just feed the alternator down into its position. Get Get at least one of the bolts started and we should be we should be grand now what i have noticed is that the cable did move the main cable needs to be routed to go round to the back it goes in between the alternator and the block but it needs to be routed so that it goes round to the back of the alternator mine moved just then and obviously if we'd have bolted the alternator up the cable would have been in the wrong place so that is worth bearing in mind get the orientation correct and the bolts should start fairly easily there we go that's the top two started so to get underneath to the bottom one which is really really awkward because there's not a great deal of room under it I think I'm just gonna have to do it left-handed and I kind of like getting two fingers either side of it and trying to spin it around like that it's 
really awkward. It is started because I can't pull it out now. So, right, what I need to do now is just tighten these three up. So I'll get them tightened up, and then when you bring you back, we'll look at the uh, connections on the back of the alternator. Right then, alternator is now installed. It's in place. It's bolted up, and it's all snug and good to go. The belt, I'm going to leave until later. We could do that right at the end. Um, I'm not interested in the belt right now. What I want to do is obviously reassemble the car. But first, what we need to do is make all the electrical connections. So now here's the main cable that goes down to the starter motor and off to the battery. And that will pop on just there like so. Now, uh, when I removed this um, cable from the old alternator, I wasn't sure whether the new one was going to come with a nut. It didn't. So I've recovered the, the nut off of the old alternator. 13 millimeter. Get it on. And then make sure that it's nice and tight. There we go, right. And the other electrical connector is this one here. It comes from the fuel rail and it actually is a separate little cable of its own just here. This little piece here plugged into the fuel rail just like that and then that will go down and connects onto there just like so uh, in fact what i'm going to do i'm going to root that underneath this coolant pipe and then connect it like that now there is somewhere that that's supposed to um obviously clip onto but I can't for the life of me remember where it was. I'm not even 100% sure if it was actually clipped onto anything when I removed it. Um, but if it becomes apparent, then obviously I'll clip it on later. It might be on the side of the manifold, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, that's where we are right now and um, we're all good. So everything's connected uh, in the manner it should be. What we need to do next is get the inlet manifold on. Now, all we need to do here really, this is the fuel, the injectors, and yeah, what I've done, here you can see on the uh, the mating faces where the uh, where the manifold fits. I've given it a nice little uh, clean up to get any of the um, the rubbish and the corrosion off. Um, obviously, I did that with this tissue in place. Um, don't don't do it with without any tissue in it because it will all end up inside uh, inside your valves and um, it can potentially obviously cause carnage inside your inside your cylinder. So you don't uh, you don't want to get any of that rubbish in there. What we're we going to do next then? Yeah, uh, manifold fitted. So. What we need to remember is the cable here that comes from the knock sensor actually connects into um, the part of the loom where it goes into this box. It connects just here. So that needs to come up through the manifold um, and we need to remove the dipstick. Um, as I said before, what we're going to do is we're going to replace all of the gaskets um, on the manifold. So what I'll do, I'll get all of them swapped out. Um, the bolts uh, that hold the manifold onto the onto the cylinder head had blue Loctite on them, so I'm going to clean all the old blue Loctite off. I'm going to add new Loctite, and then um, we'll get them uh, we'll get them all fitted. So um, I'll get the uh, I'll get the manifold prepped, and then um, we'll we'll get it we'll get it mounted up. Okay, inlet manifold. As you can see, I've fitted the four nice new uh, gaskets, and if you look, you can see that they sit proud. Of the mating face of the uh, of the manifold itself, so they'll make a nice seal. Whereas the old ones here, um, they they thinned out and they were actually not sitting proud. So, they're, they're, I mean, they they might have been all right, but you know, just to be on the safe side, you don't want to have to take it all off again just when you've got an air leak, um, because um, if it pulls in unmetered air, it will throw a uh, it will throw a fault code um, because obviously it's air that hasn't gone past the flow meter, so the, the, it'll, it'll cause all sorts of havoc if it. Um, if they leak so it's a good bit of insurance um to uh, to change them right um as i said before the uh, the bolts had uh, blue loctite on and what i did was i just stuck them on the grind i've got the luxury of a grinder with a wire wheel um just a, a wire brush can do it you know just get the old stuff off clean them off and then what we're going to do is use uh, loctite 243 which is a blue thread locker um it's a uh, medium strength um and um, it's, it's fairly resistant to temperature as well, so uh, it, it won't go soft again uh, when the engine's running. Um, before we begin putting that on, um, what we need to do is we need to remove the dipstick. We need to be mindful of the knock sensor. But um, earlier on, I mentioned this little clip here, and I couldn't remember where it went. Um, I worked it out. It goes on here. Um, that sits just there um, underneath the engine 
uh, mounting bolt. Um, we'll put that all on later. Um, and it's to do with, uh, it's like a purge system. Um, we'll, uh, we'll look at that later on, um, once we get it all um, back together at that end. So, um, inlet manifold. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna remove the dipstick. The oil on this car is actually a lovely clean color, so. Um, yep, right. Stick that down there to one side. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna remove all of these bits of tissue from each of the inlet ports. And these were in there just to stop any rubbish ending up down on the valves um, causing carnage. Okay, now what we need to do now is maneuver the manifold into position, not forgetting the knock sensor cable. And this coolant hose down here slots into this. And there's like a little, like a little weird sleeve. I think it's actually supposed to be bonded onto it, but it's not, it's come off over time because of heat cycles and what have you. But I'm gonna keep that on there because obviously it will protect it from chafing uh, when it sits in there. So that's um, also worth bearing in mind. Get that in the right place. And then maneuver in the right spot. Not too fiddly, but we'll get there. Just make sure all the gaskets are still in place, which they are. Get the sleeve on. Pop the coolant hose into place. Pretty much there. And there we go, guys. Right. We can see that all the bolt holes are aligned. And we're looking good. Right. So, let's get a couple of bolts in. A little bit of thread locker. This pop dropped off of one of the uh, connectors for the injectors they're a little bit fragile uh, it's not a showstopper all they do is they don't the, these won't come off they do lock into place but they prevent them from coming off unless you slide them up it's it's not a it's not a massive you know it's not a massive biggie a little bit of thread lock thread lock feels a bit a bit gammy will do Give a little. There we are, not too much. Because we probably do want them to come off again one day. And then stick it in place. And there's one. And all we've got to do is exactly the same with the other five. So, I'll get these five bolts in. Sorry, yeah, all five uh, bolts in. And then uh, we'll look at the next step, which will most probably be the fuel rail. Okay then, uh, fuel rail. So the uh, little seals on the uh, each of the injectors, what I've done, I've given a little lube, a light lube with uh, a little bit of, just a little bit of silicone grease. Um, and the reason for that is because it will help with the installation. They don't, they won't go, they won't stick as you're trying to install it. They literally will just slide in nice and nice and gently and, and everything will be good. Um, so that's the reason for that. So to fit it, all we're gonna do is position it 
above each of the ports of the inlet manifold and gently push it and as you can see it, it glided in there absolutely lovely and that was because we lubricated the we lubricated the seals and that's that's the difference um, had we not done that it would have been a little bit more effort to get it in um, so it's well worth doing um, yeah silica, any silicon grease really uh, you could use um, petroleum jelly if uh, if that's what you've got a line around it'll be that'll work just as well um, but it's well worth doing that's all about making lives easier get those bolts in the 213 millers Snug them up. Right. Now what we've got is we've got quite a few things to connect up. Um, the this box here will clip onto the top of these little lugs here, but what we need to do is just position the connectors for the injectors into the correct place because it'll just make things a little bit more easy going. Put them down and then push all the connectors for the injectors into place and there we are right what we can do now is connect the knock sensor what we've got here is vacuum controls over here we've got several connectors we've got one here that goes on to the um, inlet air temperature sensor connect that one up the beauty of this job is a lot of things the connectors are all pretty much falling where they need to be uh, so that that makes lives you, you know that makes your life easier um, okay what we've got next is the fuel hose just here now this it's simply a case of pushing it into place until it clicks and you heard it click and it's there to remove it you push you push in on that so until it clicks and it's all good but it really is that easy right um the purge valve will leave that for now that goes onto the top of the purge valve like that and then that goes down to the throttle body so again we'll leave that for the moment um, we're pretty much there with that. Oh, hang on, what we have got, we've got the vacuum line that goes to the um, fuel pressure regulator. So we'll just gently pop that on. And there we go, that's, that's that in place. And that is everything we need for the moment. That's, oh, oh actually, yeah, we've got this one. So this one comes down here to the little red, just here, little red one, just down here and again much like the fuel um much like the fuel pipe it's just a case of pushing it into position like so and again this is one of those ones that in order to remove it you have to push down so if you give it a little tug it makes sure it's secure and there we are that is that done so that one goes on to the throttle body itself so again as you can see it sits in it's sitting in roughly the correct location um and again so will that that'll that'll sit just just there um with this case that, yeah that cable doesn't go in there at all it, that's what this is for it sits just like that um but yeah we'll get the throttle body on next i think um and then uh, yeah we're uh, but yeah we're making we're making quite good progress um coming together quite nicely so yeah throttle body next okay then throttle body next um, obviously it mounts onto the end of the uh, inlet manifold and we've got a brand new uh, gasket just here and this one feels you know nice and supple compared to the one that came off which was it started to go a little bit uh, a little bit plasticky so it goes on just like so it only goes in one way because there's like a little notch for it to sit into and there we go as you can see it is sitting proud of the housing um, so we should get a very good seal right then um, orientation wise there's a couple of little 
lugs and you can see which one's been in use because that one's full of um, uh, you know it's got a bit dirty and crusty whereas that one is nice and clean so this little peg just here sits in that little that little hole so you can't get the orientation wrong um, so it literally slots on like so now the bolts when I pulled them out they they were a bit crusty and orange so what I've done I've taken them to uh, take them to the grinder and given them the treatment so they'll uh, they should be good Let's get them all in started and we'll snug them up there were torque setting for these they're only 10 uh, they're only I think they're m6 I think they're only m6 bolts so the torque setting will be an hour around 10 newton meters so uh, yeah don't don't lean on them and then we'll just snug them all up make sure that they're all up to touch first and then I'll go around in a crisscross pattern and just snug them all down make sure they're nice and tight touch now what I'm going to do is go around and just tighten them all up and all we're doing is just don't have to lean on them just snug them up enough to just to compress that seal and there we go that's that should be good enough right happy with that okay so we've got some more things that we can connect now. We've got the electrical connector for the throttle body just there. And then we've got this here. Now this um, needs a new clip. I mean, this little bit of hose looks a little bit perished. Um, I might see if I've got another piece just to be on the safe side. If I've got a piece, I'll change it. If not, then uh, I'll reuse it, but it's yeah, it's got some little cracks on the outside, but it's not doesn't look like it's gone through. But what I'm definitely going to do is get a new clip because that one's horrible and rusty. Now this clip uh, clips onto here, onto this tube here, and then we'll go over to the top of this purge valve just here. Uh, obviously, that's the fuel tank vent valve, uh, which I explained in the last episode what that's for. Okay, so um, I'll get a new clip for that and we'll, um, we'll look at doing that, but I'll do that when I actually put the, the vent valve back on. Um, it's not desperate right now. So next, what we can look at is the, uh, the air box itself. Um, that's next, air box. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty much there, guys. We're, we're not far off at all. Right then, air box, air cleaner, whatever you want to call it. Um, what we're going to do is fit that next. Okay, so... Um, one bolt here in this little rubber. I mean, it's a little bit perish, but it'll do the job. Um, goes through this little lug here and into that hole just there on the uh, on the chassis. And then here we've got this little rubber lug that sits on this little plastic lug. Um, dead simple. Um, the way to get it in is going to be a little bit awkward because you have to manoeuvre it so that this hole sits over the intake pipe, which comes from here. So we'll wiggle it about until we've got it in place. There we go. And then, there we go, that's snug on. And we're all good. That is the airbox in place. So what I'll do, if I take my little rubber, little rubber sleeve, get the bolt in, get it started.
and there we go that is the airbox fitted next what we need to do is make all the connections we make all these connections they're a little bit fiddly there we go that's one pop it into its little its little um holder there and then just here we've got these little brackets again for them to slot into and just here um we're gonna we're, we'll fit a uh, tie wrap around there i've just gotta go and grab one and then that will uh, tie wrap that into position and then that's that all um all sorted and in position right what we'll do next is we'll move on to the inlet pipe from the air box to the throttle body and it fits that way around um, obviously this pipe here goes up to the uh, up to the cam cover so for this i've got two new jubilee clips and we'll put them on in an orientation that makes them easy to access as i said these are 59 to 82 mil jubilee clips um you'd probably get away with a different size but that's just what i bought and then what i'll do i think i'll put it on that way around and that way around all right then we need to maneuver this into position and make sure that she goes over fully and there we go there's a little lug there which helps with the orientation and then this one there we are that's on let me just double check underneath yeah we're all good in fact i'm not happy with the orientation of my jubilee click now i've got it in position so what i'll do switch that one round that way it makes it easier for me to access and then try that again get that end on and then <sighs> pop her back over come on it went on really easily the first time and now you can almost guarantee that she won't Right, so now what we'll do is we will tighten up our Jubilee clips. Ensuring that they're in the perfect position, like that. Same for the bottom one. This one's a little bit more awkward to get into. I think we're there now. Yeah, there 
we go. Right, that's both ends of that done. And then, get the, the breather on. And close the clip up. There we go, that is the air box. And a pipe work all all uh, all sorted so happy with that i'll um, tie wrap that in a moment and then what we'll do we'll move to the other end we'll start looking at getting the belt on and sorting out the purge valve okay what we're going to do next is we're going to refit the drive belt now this is the one that i took off and it's in really good condition there's no cracking whatsoever on this one so i'm happy to refit it now i'm going to try my best to uh, capture this but there's not a lot of room to get in there with the camera so some of it you're going to have to take my word for. What I'll do though, for the uh, for the actual routing of the belt, um, it's pretty straightforward. There's four pulleys. You've got the alternator, you've got the water pump, you've got the aircon compressor, and the crank. Um, the belt goes around the outside of all of those. The only thing that's on the outside of the belt is the tensioner itself. Um, so that's fairly uh, it's fairly straightforward to fit. It's not it's not a complicated routing at all. But what I'll do, just for clarity, I will put a picture up right now. Uh, and as you can see, it is, it is a pretty straightforward, um, uh, you know, route in for, for the belt. So um, it's, it's not too, it's not one that you have to physically remember, uh, unlike some cars. Okay, so what I'll do is feed the belt in underneath here and get it around where I want it to be. Now, as you can see, we've still got the little screw holding the tensioner. Um, back in the uh, um, against the, against its spring pressure so it's not relaxed at the moment it's still being held back so I'm gonna first take it around the crankshaft I've now got it over the top of the alternator and then I'm now pushing it down around the aircon compressor and I think we're now on the aircon compressor we've got it over the water pump the water pump sits between the aircon compressor and the alternator so they're like stacked aircon compressor at the bottom water pump in the middle and then alternator at the top okay so the belt is in the correct position I'm happy with it just check the air, the AC compressor, make sure it's in the right place. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Right then, what we need to do now is we need to get our little breaker bar in, because what we need to do now is we need to remove that little screw holding the tensioner. So I've got my breaker bar in. I'm gonna push down really hard. Oh, it takes a it takes a bit of effort. Push down really hard and try and get the screw out. Now, there. So there's the there's the screw. I'll just let that drop. I'll recover it in a minute. And now I can ease the tension back. And there. Oh, and there is. The belt nicely tensioned just double check that it's sitting in the right place and there we go right what i'll do i will recover my little screw uh, wherever that went i think it's sat on the under tray i'll get that back and then what i'll do we'll um next sort out the uh, the fuel tank vent valves and all that good stuff um yeah we'll do that next Okay, right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sort out the um, fuel tank vent valve. Now, it sits just here on the engine mount, like that. The bolt goes back in. And then we'll have to snug it up, it's a 16 mil bolt. tight and there we go right now what we need to do is this connector here is the one that I was talking about earlier on 
um, where I couldn't remember where it went. That just goes in like so, and then we turn it to lock it in position. Um, I think what I'll do actually is to make it easier is put that in first like that then slot that in position and then put the connector on top there we are right next we've got the uh, the the, uh, the vent hose that comes from the fuel tank simply up like that until it clicks and then that goes into there and then this hose clips into the top again until it clicks and then this end as I was talking about earlier on the hose is um, I think this hose is actually fitted uh, press fitted onto there and I can't really get it off without damaging the without, I don't really want to risk damaging this pipe because I'll have to replace the whole thing um, otherwise I don't really want to have to do that um, so that goes on to the little brass fitting on the uh, on the throttle body I've put a new uh, a brand new clip on um, it should be a case of just pushing it on and then taking the pliers and bring in the clip down like so and there we go that is that right next thing we need to do is fit the trim now um the hose from the throttle body goes into the vent valve just clips into these little clips just here and then this trim these two here again we're clipping onto the fuel rail just like so and there we are that is that done okay next battery fitment <coughs> okay here is the battery let's pop it into the battery box connect up the vent pipe And what we're going to do now is connect the terminals to the battery. That's the first one. And there this is the second one, nice and tight. Okay, um, what I'm not going to do yet is put the clamp on and the cover and all that sort of stuff. What I want to do is I just want to check the standing voltage on the battery. Okay, we've got 12.3 volts. Um, that, should, uh, that should be fine. Um, what I'm going to do now is start the car. Now, what I want to do is start the car um, and I'm going to turn on the headlights and the main beams and then what we're going to do is we're going to check the voltage at the battery and hopefully we're getting a charging output. Right then, uh, the engine as you can hear is running. Um, belt, the belt routing looks all good, everything seems to be working fine and the alternator is spinning. Uh, obviously the car is only at idle. Now what I've done, um, I've turned the headlights and the main beam on um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick check across the battery that it's being charged. Now what I um, would expect to see here is somewhere in the region of around about the 14 volt mark. 13 and a half would be, would be suitable, uh, 14, 14 volts would be, uh, would be there perfect. So if I put that there so you guys can see it. And there we go, 14.14 volts 1314 volts um so yeah she looks good she's charging fine she seems to be running absolutely beautifully um yeah absolutely bang on so um obviously we, we've cured the problem uh the alternator had failed and wasn't charging the battery um and uh and we've we've rectified that so what i'm going to do 
stop the engine. I can now put the cover back on the battery. Um, I'm going to put the inner wheel trim back on. I'm not going to bore you with all of that on this video um, because you don't need to see it. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to let this, uh, let this idle up to temperature. Just put a little bit of charge back in the battery. So, uh, so we're good. So yeah, the car is now back in action. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video, maybe found it useful, and maybe uh, have used this video in order to replace the alternator on your car. Um, if you did, then by all means, you know, leave a comment in the uh, in the description and let me know because uh, it, you know I, I enjoy it when people use my videos to uh, to help themselves out, especially if it saves you a decent wad of cash. Okay, guys, uh, join me in the socials if you want to come over, come over and have a chat. Um, links are in the description, and I will see you all again for the next video. Take care. Bye bye now.